Penn State has never made the college football playoffs, but today I'm going to attempt to change that. They've lost six straight games to the Buckeyes and seem to be the third best team in the Big Ten East, but there's one player that could change everything. Quarterback Drew Aller is a former five-star recruit, and he's an 85 overall as a sophomore in NCAA football. Then next to him in the backfield, you got Nick Singleton, who rushed for over a thousand yards as a freshman. So this duo is set to shake up the Big Ten, and I'm going to give myself two seasons to win it all with Penn State. I believe that this team is just a few pieces away from winning a championship championship, but there are a couple of needs. As you can see, there isn't that much depth at wide receiver, and the same is true for the cornerback position with a big drop-off after the first two players. Due to that, I'm going to shoot for some of the best recruits, and with Fang's recruiting mod, true freshmen can be around a 90 overall. I've never used it before, so I didn't know what to expect, but players can go up by a ton of overalls or bust really hard. Let's see what this 91 overall actually is. It seems like he's an 85, and the number two player in the country actually ended up being a 70 overall. This is going to make it super hard to get this team ready for a championship, but we will be using an 18 playoff instead of four, which is closer to what we have in real life. Like I said, we're projected to be the third best team in the Big Ten East, and we have to get 10 wins this first year or James Franklin might get fired. That's our first season objective, and the other two are beat Michigan or Ohio State and signed an 85 overall recruit. I did find a 92 overall wide receiver and a 93 overall safety, and let me tell you, if we got 6'5 safety Kevin Hunter Jr., we would be incredible. Also, there's one last thing I have to mention. Since these four Pac-12 schools are joining the Big Ten, next season, and NCAA football only lets you put in 16 teams per conference, the two schools that finish at the bottom of the Big Ten are going to be kicked out of the conference and relegated to another one. We shouldn't finish anywhere near there, but it's something interesting to keep an eye on. On Drew Aller's first drive, he's already in a third and ten situation, but he's going to try to take the top off of the defense, and he turns it over. This is not a good start for the freshman in the rain, but that was not the worst news that came out of this game at all. Sophomore stud Nick Singleton tore his tricep, so we're not even a quarter into the season, and we're already going to be losing one of our best players for most of the year. We have backups that are good though, and Drew Aller's life just got a lot harder. By the third quarter, it was pretty obvious that this team was going to be successful, but it's not because of what was going on on offense. It was all on the other side of the ball as the defense had been doing a fantastic job stopping West Virginia, and backup Katron Allen did show some signs of success, but he wasn't able to break anything away. Up to this point, Drew Aller still hasn't thrown for a touchdown, but it's not entirely his fault, and this third and goal could change everything as it was dropped again. The rain is causing his receiving core to struggle quite a bit, so he's going to try to take off with his legs, do it himself, but in trying to make it to the end zone, he ended up getting blasted, and Drew Aller seems very reliant upon his defense, who just gave up a massive play to poke. They need to make a tackle. Dixon is going to be able to bring him down, but West Virginia is in a position where they are about to pull off the upset. Thankfully, we get a tackle here, and we'll be able to hold the Mountaineers to three, but it shouldn't be this close. Drew Aller has an opportunity to prove to this home crowd that he is the quarterback of the future. He throws up a one-on-one -on -one ball, and Lambert Smith comes down with it. He breaks free. He goes to the end zone, and everybody in the stadium is erupting at this catch right now. Just one stop seals it for the Nittany Lions, and on fourth and three, there's somebody wide open. Their defense was not good enough, so this home opener that was meant to be an easy win is anything but that. Green is going to try to scramble, but we were ready for it, and on third and goal, it looks like they go with the wide receiver screen. We just need to get some pressure, and they throw it up, and that's going to be intercepted by Dixon. That is game. He's going to take it out of the end zone. He's going to rub it in their faces, and he might take this all the way back to the crib. What an ending to this season opener, and Katron Allen's going to have to continue to step up big. The earliest Nick Singleton will probably be back is the Ohio State game, but it might be even later than that, so we might have a big disadvantage going into both of our matchups against top five teams. As for recruiting, let's just say I am finding a lot of guys that are busting, and by 24 overalls, which is insane. Also, I don't think we're going to land Kevin Hunter Jr., but I have a backup in Bobby Holton, and the only issue with that is he's a strong safety at 5'9". But for now, our only focus is going to be taking down Temple, as we need to get a big win over them. And it's only the start of the second quarter, but Drew Aller already has three touchdown passes. Pretty much, we just need to be trying new things, and the end around on fourth and inches is going to work out. Dante Cephas is going to get the edge, and he'll take it to the house. With a little under two minutes left, we're still up by 15, and on this third and four, we're going to go up by even more, and I think this is how everybody expected us to play last week. I won't act like Drew Aller didn't struggle in the end, as he still had three interceptions, but he's still adapting to the college level, so that's why it's so important for him to get in as many reps as possible. The following week against Illinois State, they did do better than everybody expected, but they couldn't win, of course, and the Nittany Lions even ended up covering the spread just by a point. In this one, he was much better about not turning the ball over, and now it's time for us to start Big Ten Conference play. At this point in the year, Katron Allen is actually in the Heisman race, but some teams have only played like one game, and recruiting battles are already getting super crazy, so we're gonna have to start scheduling some visits. For Kevin Hunter Jr., our dream recruit, he's only available against Ohio State, and the bonuses for winning that are crazy. As for the rest of them, we're gonna host them against 
against the Wolverines, and we didn't have a choice because before that, we have three road games. Our first is against Northwestern, who's 2-0, and Ryan Field is packed. I think it's important to keep in mind that since we have an 18 playoff, every one of these matters, because even if we can't beat Ohio State or Michigan, we could still get a playoff spot. Drew Aller has got to be sick of trying to pull off these last second comebacks. He can't get this throw out, and the play action seems to fake out the Wildcats. It looks like he's going to have Lambert Jr. over the top. That's going to get us all the way to the 40, and now we're able to slow it down, get in the field goal range, and hopefully kick a field goal to win. That was the worst run read option ever. Katron Allen was left wide open, though. He'll go all the way to the 30, and I think Northwestern's going to try to bring the heat, so we went with the play action, but Lambert Smith didn't get open. I hate this decision, but we are going to have to just trust our defense, and we really have no reason not to. I think they're very solid. We just have to generate some pressure. Maybe we need to be recruiting an edge or something, because there's no reason that Ben Bryant should have that much time in the pocket. I'm sending four every single time, but they are not getting in at all. They have the check down here. We're going to be able to make a tackle inbounds, and with five seconds left, the computer has run a play. They didn't take a timeout. If this is the final play of the game, this is it, and we are going to knock it away. Bad clock management's going to get us our fourth win of the year, and Drew Aller barely escaped this one. What's great about that result is we landed two recruits, and their names are Colton Snyder and Bobby Helton, who we really wanted. Assuming that we don't win this battle for Kevin Hunter Jr., 5'9", strong safety, Bobby Helton's going to be starting for us next year. As for wide receivers, we don't have much luck as Daryl Pratt's probably going to go to LSU, but I'm recruiting other talent as well, including a backup quarterback if Drew Aller goes down. Now we have another game on the road, and Rutgers beat Michigan State, but they also lost to Iowa and Fresno State. So going into this, I think we should be confident, and that translated very well out there on the field. Drew Aller was just throwing dots left and right, and Harrison Wallace III showed that he could be an amazing third option for us. I don't know what he was on today, but I hope he takes it again because he was putting multiple players in spin cycles and making it very hard to miss him. With 30 seconds left in the third quarter, this is a very big fourth and one. We're going to go with the halfback toss to the outside, and you know that Katron Allen has the speed to get that plus a lot more. Let me tell you, after last week versus Northwestern, this felt great, and Drew Aller put on a show once again. He's doing so well that Terrell Wilson and 84 overall Tevin Browning wanted to come here, but evidently five-star Daryl Pratt didn't want to play with him, and that was pretty upsetting until I noticed that we jumped into the lead on Kevin Hunter Jr. The true freshman will come in with 99 tackle, and with Ohio State losing by three to Wisconsin, everything's looking great for us. We just have to make sure that we continue to win, and never did I think that 2-2 two two Indiana would be giving us this many issues. We're down by four, and I think we're going to score on this drive, but it's still very, very close. I'm going to try to get Katron Allen into some space, and it's going to work, but we missed the extra point, and defensively, Indiana has worked it all the way down the field on us very quickly. Dexter Williams the second better not beat us. That would be incredibly embarrassing. We get a tackle, but on the next play, they go with the option again, and I read it wrong. I don't think that this two-point conversion will really change much, but they get it as well. I cannot believe this. Number four, Penn State. I told you all that we would struggle in one or two of these road games, and Drew Aller was just able to escape the pocket. He does have a little bit of speed on him, but not enough to break free. He got dragged down at the 50. I think Harrison Wallace Jr. is going to bomb them over the top here. He broke free, and that's a beautiful throw. He has been an amazing third wide receiver for us, and on third and seven, I am all over that. The curl is not open. Dixon is going to guard it. They're going to take their flat, but they have no choice but to go for it here on fourth and five, and they drop it. All we need is one first down to win the game, and we have the blockers for Katron Allen, who gets more than that. Unfortunately, he stepped out of bounds, so we're going to need another one, and I think it's best if the ball is in the hands of Drew Aller. He's going to take the slant for the first, and Dante Cephas made the game-winning catch despite getting railed. We escaped with a one-point win, but we need to play much better against the Wolverines, who are coming off of a loss to number 20 Minnesota. Almost every recruit is visiting for this one, so it feels like so much is on the line, and so far Drew Aller has not been handling that well. We're losing by 10, and for a while it seemed like the pressure was getting to him, but now he's starting to figure it out a little bit better. To be honest, I don't even know how he saw that that was an open receiver, but ever since that moment, he has really turned things around. He is going to find his tight end on the slant for a touchdown, and going into the fourth quarter, we're down by three. This is a massive third and eight. I'm going to get out to the halfback screen with King, but he gets knocked over. He couldn't stay on his feet, and Blake Quorum made the play of the game. He single-handedly made sure that that drive stayed alive for his team, who's about to score, and if we would have gotten the stop there, I think things would have gone much differently than they did. Our following drive has just taken way too long. There's only 55 seconds remaining, and we still haven't been able to find the end zone. So even if we do, we're going to have to recover an onside kick, and the odds of that are not great. But you know what? We're going to go for it anyway, and we're going to take our field goal to stay in it. I hate that our undefeated season's about to end, and that ball sails out of bounds. But eight teams make the playoffs, so the year is not over. And during this bye week, we have a lot to work on. My hope is that Nick Singleton will be back for the Ohio State game, but it's not looking likely. And the only recruit we landed during visit week was Boaz Burton. Due to that, there's a good chance that we don't get many of these guys, but at least we have a chance to redeem ourselves 
matchups this week versus the Buckeyes. 93 overall Kevin Hunter Jr. is on a visit, and this is our biggest game of the year. If we win this, we could win our division, but if not, there's a chance that we miss out on the Big Ten Championship and the college football playoffs. That is not the interception you want to see to start the game, and unfortunately for us, Nick Singleton is doubtful. I will say it's been very obvious that the Buckeyes know they must win this one because they have played out of their mind, and that includes Kyle McCoy, who is going to potentially throw a pick, but none of those three guys came down with it. I think the offense is going to look so much better once we can use Nick Singleton again. We need him because without him, we have to consistently rely on our defense to get stops, and with three and a half minutes remaining, we must pick up this third and six if we want to stay in it. That should have been a completion, but mid-play, the Buckeye linebacker definitely committed pass interference, and the route that should have gotten open did not. Here on fourth and six, Drew Aller might have somebody in the flat, but it's probably best if he just takes off with his legs instead. And that was great situational awareness from him there. Now he's going to float this one over the linebacker's head, and that's a touchdown. The real question will be, will we ever see the ball again? They go with the run here. I was ready for it. Jacobs makes a tackle. And on third and four, I was ready for the halfback screen as well. That should be an interception. Ellis comes away with it. Break free. Come on, buddy. You got this. And what a freaking play from Keaton Ellis. Ideally, I would love to make sure that this is the final drive of the game. And I'm going to do my best to take all of the clock with me. Cephas is not fast enough here, though. And that's the first time that the wide receiver end around hasn't worked for us. I'm going to roll out on third down. And you know what? Across the body. What a throw to Theo Johnson. He holds on to it. And this is where Penn State football comes out on top. This will be seen as the game that earned us the playoff spot. They're going with the wide receiver screen. Someone bring down Julian Fleming. And Kyle McCord has gotten them into a position where they're going to have a chance at the Hail Mary. That ball makes it down to the end zone. We are going to knock it down, though. And for the first time in seven years, we beat Ohio State. You can tell that our fans are ecstatic. And Drew Aller had himself a game. So now we're sitting right behind Michigan in the Big Ten East. And you all won't believe who committed to the school. The guy that we wanted from the start, 93 overall Kevin Hunter Jr. And he's going to make a major impact on our defense next season. That one win alone moved us up to number three. And what is UTSA doing up here? They have played a cupcake schedule, but I'm sure Tulane will give them some issues. And to be honest, I'm surprised that none of our players are in the Heisman race. All we have to do is make sure that we win these final four matchups. And look at that. It's going to be our first snow game. I'm hoping that Nick Singleton is finally back, but he's still not out there. At least we are doing well so far against the Illini. And Wallace holds on to another. And don't get me wrong, Katron Allen has done a great job filling in, but I really want to use Nick Singleton. I know for a fact that he wouldn't lose six yards on a halfback screen, but I'm still going to throw it to our best receiver. And yes, that's right. I just called Harrison Wallace the third our best receiver. I don't know what it is about him and Drew Aller, but they've been hooking up extremely well to each other. And even though he's not the best on paper, on the field, it's been a different story. With the way that our defense plays, I don't think it's any surprise that we were able to take down the fighting Illini by this many points. And this big win should secure James Franklin another contract. Going into the year, things were a little bit shaky, but he's already accomplished two of the three season objectives. And as long as we win two of these last three, he'll complete the third. I'd like to think that we would go undefeated in that stretch, but with Nick Singleton still not back this week, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. If it weren't for Harrison Wallace the third, we would be tied 7-7, seven to seven, but he's already had two touchdowns. He makes another catch here, and out of the slot position, Drew Aller has just loved to feed him. He's going to find him again, and you'd think that I would be thrilled with that dominating win, but Drew Aller had two interceptions in the process, and he needs to work on cutting those out. With two weeks left in the regular season, the Big Ten standings look like this, and the top 25 looks like this with Western Kentucky and UTSA in the top three. It makes no sense at all, but Catron Allen's also in the Heisman race, and good for him and all, but Nick Singleton has to come back soon. I don't think there's any question who I should start if he's healthy, but against Maryland, he's not playing again, and the Terrapins are ranked inside the top 20. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but it's already looking pretty terrible for us, and that's because of Tua's brother. If we could end the half with a touchdown, though, things could change, and of course it's Harrison Wallace the third that creates a ton of separation. I would have never imagined that our defense would be the issue, but that's what's keeping us at a loss right now. I threw up a one-on-one -on -one ball to Wallace, and I'm not even surprised that he came down with it. We even got the two-point conversion, but we cannot stop the Terrapins. Their offense is doing amazing, and Talia Tagovailoa is leading the way. He got us with the option. We need to just bring him down, and if we were ever going to get a goal line stop, we need it right now. We have to hold them to three, because if we don't, it's probably over. They went with the option, and let me tell you, we sniffed this one out perfectly. That one stop might make all of the difference, and Nick Singleton is finally out there on the field. He came out for the kickoff return. He just made one guy miss. He broke away. Come on, please go to the house. He's going to break a tackle, make one guy miss with another juke. What is going on? He dressed for the game, but he had yet to take any snaps. And now with less than two minutes remaining, he is out there on the field. He's going to help us by blocking. I'm going to throw up a 50-50 ball to Lambert Smith, who is not going to come down with it. I thought that was going to be a great read. To be honest, that's a sophomore mistake from Drew Aller. And it's a good thing that we still have all three of our timeouts to get the ball back. It's not over yet. We're still going to have a chance. But man, everybody got so excited that Nick Singleton was out there that we didn't even focus. 50 seconds left 
and this could be for a spot in the Big Ten Championship for one of the top spots in the playoffs, and why is Nick Singleton not returning this? Do not tell me that he got hurt again on that last play that he was out there for. He is not out there right now. We are going to pick up the first, and with no timeouts, we cannot make any mistakes. We have to be very quick, because if I accidentally take a sack or something, I don't want to lose. We're going to take the slant to our best receiver, and that's going to put Harrison Wallace the third in the school record books. Well, Talia got him in a position to have one final shot at the Hail Mary, but you know we should just knock this down, and I hate how close it was, but we win another tight one. Harrison Wallace the third, of course, one player of the game, and our final matchups against Michigan State. Unfortunately, going into this, we know that we can't win the Big Ten, because for some reason, Ohio State finished 6-6, six and six, and Michigan has the tiebreaker over us. It seems like ever since we beat them, everything went wrong with the Buckeyes season, and if you take a look at the top 10, it doesn't make too much sense. To be honest, we could win it all this season, and this will be our last game before the playoffs. I figured that we would do well, but I didn't expect it to be this much of a blowout, and the one reason I do think it got this bad is because we had Nick Singleton returning, and with the threat of him running the ball, Michigan State focused on him instead of our passing game. Let's just say we have some momentum going into the playoffs, and this might actually be a one-year rebuild. The regular season ended with us finishing our third objective, and going into conference championship week, this is what the top 10 looks like. But first, I have to mention that Michael Penix won the Heisman, and I knew Drew Aller wouldn't be in the running, but that's because he had 14 interceptions. Even though Nick Singleton was hurt all year, Katron Allen did a fantastic job, and we wouldn't have gone 11-1 without all three of these wide receivers. We even had the left tackle that won the Outland Trophy, and senior Adisa Isaac won the Lombardi and the Nagurski. Now it's time for me to reveal the playoff picture, and let's just say the top two teams aren't very good. I'm not happy that they got put above us as we have to face Georgia, and despite being the higher seed, we're not even favored. I am going to hop into the other matches just to see how they end up playing out, and like expected, Drake may torch the number one seed, while Washington pounded Western Kentucky for a 26-point win. There was no way that defense was stopping the Heisman winner, and for the last semifinal matchup, besides ours versus Georgia, of course, Michigan seems like they're going to win, but on third and four, they're going to hand it off, and they're not going to get it, so Bo Nix has an opportunity to lead his team down the field and get them into the next round, but he can't. With that result, there's one game left, and if we can win, we'll play Washington next. We might be down 14-0 already, but it is early, and Nick Singleton's going nowhere. He did really well last week, but he has been struggling for us today. I have somebody open in the end zone, though, and it's held on to, and by the third quarter, we are still down by seven, but we are not out of it yet. Drew Aller has done a pretty good job. He can't escape here, but the Bulldog defense is tough. Here on third and four, I'm all over that slant. I was waiting for Carson Beck to throw it my way, but instead, he took his check down, and now we have them on a third and eight where I can't get over to the halfback screen. It would have been nice to pick it off, but instead, that didn't happen, and they're going to score. This defense is very young, so I am confident they're going to improve a ton during the offseason, but they are not performing very well today, and Drew Aller just broke Trace McSorley's school record, but to be honest, if we can't get the win to go with it, it's not going to mean too much. I'm going to throw up a 50-50 ball to Lambert Smith, who comes down with it, and I regret saying that Harrison Wallace the third was our best receiver because he has not been ever since I did. Our biggest issue is we just haven't been able to hold the Bulldogs at all, and I hate to say it, but we're trailing by 14 in the fourth quarter, and there's a good chance that we never make it out of this quarterfinal matchup. It's fourth and three, so we have to get this. Theo Johnson creates enough separation to get at least 10 or 15, and I'm thankful he's kept us in it, but we need to score fast. I want to go with the deep post. I don't think I'm going to get the throw off, and Drew Aller is not getting up. He's out for the rest of the game with a bruised sternum, so we have to use 75 overall Bo Pribula. He is a backup quarterback, and I have no clue how we're going to come back. I'd like to just hand it off to Nick Singleton and let him go to work. He busts out of that one, gets at least 15 or 20, but we all know that they'll eventually key in on stopping him. And on fourth and eight, we're going to have no choice but to pass it. I'm going to try to make a tight read, and it's going to be intercepted. George is going to knock us out of the quarterfinal, and that is it. That's the end of our run. You hate to see it, but our defense could have done much better, and the Bulldogs didn't even win their next game against the Huskies. As for the championship, it's these two teams, but Michael Penix Jr. got hurt against Georgia, so I'd expect Drake May to take it home. Well, this is a little bit of a surprise, but with 15 seconds left, North Carolina is losing, and they just got held on fourth down. Dylan Morris has won it all for the Huskies, and of course, they're joining the Big Ten next year. That reminds me, the two teams that are going to be getting kicked out of the conference so the Pac-12 teams can come in are Indiana and Rutgers. It's going to be much harder to win the Big Ten, and it looks like I need to convince three different juniors to return. Besides them, we're losing a few quality seniors, but that's it, and I think Keandre Lambert-Smith will just stay if I convince him to get his college degree. As for Kalen King, our 96 overall corner, I'm going to guarantee him a national championship, and he's still undecided, but I'm also going to lie and tell him that he's going to win the Heisman, and that got him to medium, but it's the moment of truth. Will he stay? He is going to do so. That is massive, but we also need Chop Robinson, and all I had to do was tell him that we're winning it all, but I have to get these two guys to commit during offseason recruiting as well, and just like that, we have a backup in case Drew Aller goes down. To be honest, it was a small class, but we signed six five stars, and with this recruiting, 
starting mod, we're able to have players that'll start as true freshmen. To be honest, everybody had an incredible offseason, especially Drew Aller, who went up seven overalls. As for the conference realignment, this is what the Big Ten now looks like, and Indiana and Rutgers have been relegated to the American. I'm also trying to keep the schedule as realistic as possible, and based on preseason rankings, the Big Ten is the best conference in the country. We're a 99 overall team, so we should definitely be in the hunt for a championship, and that's why our only two objectives are win the Big Ten East and win a national championship. I do find it a little surprising that Drew Aller isn't on the Heisman watch, but he's a second team preseason All-American, so I guess we'll take that. I do think it's funny that Ohio State was so bad they're projected to finish mid-table in our division, but what happened to them last season could always happen to us, so we have to make sure that we take care of business, and so far our first drive is looking very good. I'm gonna dump this halfback screen off to Nick Singleton, who busts it to the outside, and if you thought our offense looked good, wait until you see the defense. Kevin Hunter Jr. was one of the hardest I've ever had to work to get a recruit, and now he's gonna be getting an interception on this play. That was an amazing one by him. He is 6'5", and he might be able to take this to the crib if he was quicker. Having somebody that is that tall lurking over the middle is a cheat code, and this offense is just going to continue to dominate. No matter what we do, I think they're going to struggle to stop us, and it looks like we're going to open the season the right way with a win over West Virginia. It feels like the additions we made to this team have made us even better, and with everybody on the offense having another year of development, it's made things so much smoother. Drew Aller can now make plays like this for the first down as he fights, and I'm excited to see if we can win it all with this Penn State team. To open up his junior year, Drew Aller passed for four touchdowns, and Georgia has already lost a game to number two Texas, who no longer has Arch Manning on their roster. It looks like he transferred away to North Texas, and he could have been used at Penn State once Drew Aller graduates. Our first home game of the year is against Bowling Green, and on our first drive, it is third and 26. I do not want to talk about it. I'm just going to throw an interception with Drew Aller in the rain. This is not a good start at all. And after giving up an early touchdown, we need to make sure that we come back out and dominate. However, our tight end decided he wanted to drop this one in the end zone, so we're going to be held to three and still trailing the Falcons by four. It didn't last for long, but it certainly was not the ideal start, and I'm just glad that as the game went on, everybody figured it out, and they all had an amazing day. The star of the show, though, was Kevin Hunter Jr., who had two interceptions, and I told you all how important it was that we landed the 6-5 freshman. As for Drew Aller, without the turnovers, he did pretty well, but he's not the Penn State guy in the Heisman race Nick Singleton is, and that's because through these first two, he's averaging 170 yards a game. We just need to make sure that we continue to win, and Minnesota was ranked last season, so I figured that they could give us issues, but I didn't expect to be down 14-0 so early. Nick Singleton is not going to get the first, and we really need to get a defensive stop. I'm going to get over there with Kevin Hunter Jr. making the tackle, and they are pressing our wide receivers on this one. I'm going to try to float it over their defense. Drew Aller throws it a bit too far, so at the end of the first, we're down 14-0. For a playoff team, it is not looking good for us. I'm not quite sure what to do. At least we're going to get a stop here, but instead of taking the field goal, they're going to go for it on fourth down, and we can't make a tackle. Being down 14-0 at home to an unranked team is so embarrassing. We can't even beat their corners. Lambert Smith comes down with it, and I guess if you're going to do this, then you don't really need to create separation. Our defense just isn't doing well, though, and I have to go for this on 4th and 13. They sent the heat, and we're not going to pick it up. However, nearing the end of the third quarter, it feels like it's over. We're trailing by 25, and we are going to score here, but we need our defense to get stops when we need them the most, and they just got toasted by that. This game has humbled us real quick. It almost feels like that time where Purdue beat Ohio State, and that was by like 30. Rondell Moore had a field day, and we just haven't been able to get anything going. This 4th and 14 is our last hope. Will we remain in the game? At least we picked it up, but we're going to need some onside kick recoveries, and we're not going to get it on this one. I don't know why I thought we were invincible, but we were playing so much better through those first two weeks. This is embarrassing, and I don't know why it took all four quarters to get the offense going. If we want to make the college football playoffs, we cannot lose another game this season, and that's much easier said than done. Their quarterback literally shredded our defense, and during this bye week, we have a ton of work to do. We only fell to number 12, so it's not like we're that far down, but we have to play on the road at Ohio State and at Michigan this year, so there is zero room for error, or else Penn State fans are just going to be left disappointed again. My goal is to make sure that doesn't happen, but this defense has been incredibly leaky, and on this play, I'm using 5'9 safety, Bobby Helton, the true freshman, and that led to us holding the Terrapins to three. To be completely honest, the game plan going into this one is just let Drew Aller sling the ball. He has found Harrison Wallace the third over the top already, and approaching halftime, it's not even a contest anymore. Already 28 to 3, about to be 35 to 3, but that'll take a good third down play and a run up the middle is what we went with. To be entirely honest, I don't even feel bad for Maryland because this is our revenge game, and we ended up winning by 44 points, so that should make a statement. Everybody's spirits feel a lot better now, and let me tell you, that locker room is buzzing. We're not gonna let one bad loss ruin our season as we're already inside the top six, and I can't believe how few teams are undefeated.
undefeated. I mean, conference-wise, Michigan is still above us, but they've lost two games, and they came against number seven Utah and at number five Notre Dame. I guess with three or four power conferences, it's gonna happen. Just like last year, our game against Michigan State wasn't very close, so in back-to-back -back seasons, I'm just glad that we went out and took care of business, because as we've seen, things could always be much worse. I'm kinda curious if this is enough to get Nick Singleton back in the Heisman race, and it turns out that I was right because here in week seven, he made the cut. Reigning champions Washington lost to Oregon as well, so we're up to number four, but we're about to face our biggest test yet. It's gonna be very hard to win at the big house, especially since it's a sold-out crowd, and Michigan thinks that they can press our wide receivers. In fact, they're leaving one wide open. That was a terrible throw, and if Drew Aller would have put a little more umph on it, we would have scored a touchdown. This time, he is gonna float it perfectly over the defense, so I guess he makes up for it. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I think we're gonna get a stop on third and ten. They just dumped it off to Donovan Edwards, which means all of the momentum is in our favor, and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Drew Aller might take it to the crib, but because of that shoelace tackle, Nick Singleton will get it instead. Kevin Hunter Jr. got another interception to put us in this fourth and four position where we're gonna pick it up, and to be honest, I don't know how Drew Aller got away with that throw. We all know that it should have been picked off, but I am not gonna complain, and words cannot explain how much fun I am having using a 6-5 safety on defense. I can pretty much get over to any ball if I need to. That's a corner route that I'm gonna intercept. Look at that pick. That is his second one of the day, but the ref is going to challenge it, and I hope they're just looking for if he stepped out of bounds or not. That's all it was. I'm not too worried about it, and with more space between him and the end zone, that just gives Drew Aller more space to operate in. Halfback tosses on the goal line have seemed to work, so I'm not gonna go away from it, and our freshman kicker did miss an extra point, so we have to go for it, which did not work out. I think we're in a pretty good position right now, but we need things to continue to go our way, and that's not gonna go anywhere, making this a massive fourth and six. They went with the halfback screen, and I'm gonna hit him, and of course it was Kevin Hunter Jr. making that play. I think this is the first time I've ever highlighted a defensive player on the channel like this, but he's doing fantastic, and could this be his third interception? It is. No matter what happens the rest of this game and the rest of this season, we found the best player ever, and on fourth and ten, I'd love to think that a stop could seal it, which we're gonna get, so Michigan, I respect the effort, but our defense stepped it up for us today, and Nick Singleton scored six touchdowns, which is a school record. It's hard to believe that we just beat Michigan by this much, but Kevin Hunter Jr. already has five interceptions this season, and it seems like everything is starting to come together as Nick Singleton is second in the Heisman race. Once Purdue loses, we will be the number one team in our division, and it's due to happen because they have gotten back-to-back -back overtime wins. In fact, Michigan beats them 39-0, and last week's result must have really triggered them. Because of the rain, I was worried about this Nebraska game, but it looks like we're gonna go into the half up 14, and I guess they don't have a choice but to try to test our 6-5 safety on the last play of the game, but this is just a chance for him to get another interception. He doesn't, but at least nothing crazy happened on that play. I think we're gonna go with a little bit of option trickery here. Drew Aller faked out three different guys at once. He'll skip on in, and he's already got four total touchdowns, but he's going for his fifth by rolling out, and that is a beautiful throw with a one-handed catch, and yet it still wasn't enough for him to get into the end zone, getting another score, so we'll just hand it off instead. The game ended up being a lot closer than I thought it would, but Nick Singleton is gonna put it away in the end with this big rush, and that's how you finish one off. As you can see, Cornhusker fans are still depressed. If Nick Singleton's gonna win the Heisman, though, he needs an easy opponent, and versus Ball State, he has a perfect chance. If he can break free on a few runs, he should be able to pad his stats a ton, and I think his first touchdown of the day is about to come right here. That would actually be the only one he gets, but it was a blowout, so it didn't make any sense risking him getting injured. The rain could have caused a lot of things to go wrong, but it didn't stop Drew Aller from scoring six touchdowns. Despite all of our success, though, it feels like we've been stuck at this four or five spot for a long time, and we better keep winning or else we're gonna miss out on the Big Ten Championship. I also wanna note that Drew Aller is the leading quarterback for passing yards, but for some reason, he won't get put on the Heisman watch. I mean, the man already has 29 touchdown passes, and he's also projected to be the number two pick in the draft, so I don't get it, but he's gonna find Lambert Smith who goes down at the five, and this feels like a perfect opportunity for Nick Singleton to bust it in himself. It's always best if you can be the first team to get on the board, but unlike most of our other matchups, we are struggling to run away with this one. On third and ten, I went with the halfback screen, and Nick Singleton somehow escaped, and he's gonna go all the way down to the two, but 99% of players can't pull that off. That was incredibly impressive, and in the end, it seems like we are gonna figure out how to pull away, but that's only because our defense is so good, and I truthfully mean that. Illinois has no choice but to go for it on fourth and two, and we ate that thing up from the start. True freshman Bobby Helton took advantage of the fact that nobody wanted to block him, and I know I've said it so many times at this point, but I've been very impressed with those recruits. Nick Singleton's also about to get his fourth touchdown of the day, and while helping us run out the clock, he ended up getting another one. I don't think he's gonna be able to beat out Kendall Milton because this guy's stats are even better, and I hate to say this, but Ohio State is 
is starting to bounce back. Their only two losses have come to Oregon and Oklahoma, and we have to play them on the road, so there is a lot that could go wrong here. If we lose, we're not going to have a great chance at winning the Big Ten. That's an amazing blitz. And now that Kyle McCord has had another season to develop, he is even better. That wasn't a great example as we luckily got the sack, but it's been a pretty rough day for our offense so far, so you can tell that the limited possessions are really messing with him. This time, he's going to have another chance to do it, and once again, he is kept up with so well. Cephas comes down with it, and we really need to stop throwing up 50-50 prayer balls, but take those instead. This drive is so important to making sure that we can get back into the game, but Nick Singleton ended up getting hurt on that play, and with him out for the game, that's going to make it even harder to be successful on offense. That is a terribly thrown ball, but aggressive catches seem to be paying off for us, and we're going to take this into the house. And this is such an important game to our success, so we have to score here, which is what we're going to do. With five minutes left in the fourth, we ended up going up 11, and we've gotten them to a fourth and five where I could see us getting a stop. It is a wide receiver screen. It is intercepted, and with eight seconds remaining, they would need a miraculous comeback to beat us. They would need to get the onside kick and score on the Hail Mary almost immediately, and I just don't see that happening because that kick was terrible. We've beaten Ohio State for the second year in a row, and with Syracuse and Kansas State losing, we have moved up to number one in the country. I also want to note that Dion has Colorado as a 9-1 team in his second year there, and I'm ready to finish out the regular season so we can go on to the postseason. To do that, we need to take down Northwestern, and I thought it would be easy, but with five minutes left, we're losing by three, and I know we're about to score a touchdown on this play, but it should not be this close. They came out with the perfect scheme, and I'm going to pick that off with Bobby Helton, the freshman, so almost immediately, everything's changed, and we're going to get into the end zone yet again. It's definitely a lot closer than any of us would have liked, but you know what? At the end of the day, our defense is doing a fantastic job. That's going to be another interception, and even though the offense decided not to show up, it's not the end of the world, and all we have left is a game against Purdue. It's snowing pretty hard here at Beaver Stadium, but that's going to make it even easier for Nick Singleton to run the ball down their throats. But with two minutes remaining, we're only up by three, so we need to figure out how to close it out. I got to give credit to the Boilermakers. They've done a great job on us, and it was 24 to 7 for the longest time, but they randomly made a great comeback, and that's an interception. Drew Aller just didn't get that route correctly, so we might be in some trouble, which is not good news. On third down, they're going to float it up in Kevin Hunter Jr.'s direction, and I don't know what Hudson Card was thinking, but it is fourth and 10, and that ball is going to get knocked down. We're going to get the win, but we definitely need to play much better in the following weeks because those games are all going to be very tough. I mean, Nick Singleton has been incredible, but he's not able to do it all himself, so everybody needs to be ready for the conference championship, which is against UCLA. Depending on what happens in these games, the teams that make the playoffs could shift a ton, and Nick Singleton is also competing for a Heisman Trophy. And it turns out we are facing the backup quarterback. That's a terrible fourth and one play, but we weren't able to make a tackle, so I'm actually really disappointed in Kevin Hunter Jr. right now. I'd like to score on our first offensive drive. We go with the play action, and I might have had somebody open earlier on, but I waited for that. What's great about that is we're about to take a lead as Theo Johnson holds on to it, and it's been a rough couple of weeks for Drew Aller, but it looks like he's starting to bounce back. He's going to throw this one to Keandre Lambert-Smith, and since he held on to it in double coverage, we're going up 11. Defense wins championships, and on third and four, we stop the draw, so we're forcing them to punt it back again, and by the time we're reaching the end of the third quarter, we're up by 18. We've just done a dang good job, so I see us winning a Big Ten championship, but on fourth and 13, we must hold on. We can't give up anything big, and this is going to be the tackle. Leave it to Kevin Hunter Jr. to lay the hammer on a poor kid, and on this fourth and inches, I'm going to fake them out with the fullback dive, and that didn't work. It is a good thing that this defense is so good. We really need them to be, and did we just force a fumble? Abdul Carter is going to pick it up, and I don't think he's going to be caught. He's going to be able to take this all the way back to the crib, and even though the refs overturned it, we still get the ball back because that was a fourth down stop, so it's okay. We're going to end up winning 31 to 17, so I'm very happy with this result, and you gotta love everybody celebrating the Big Ten Championship. The real question is, did we win the Heisman though? And unfortunately, like expected, Nick Singleton fell short. James Franklin won head coach of the year though, and Drew Aller did a much better job of limiting turnovers, which won him the O'Brien. As for Nick Singleton, he had an incredible season, and once again, our top three receivers all did amazing. Our best offensive lineman won the Outland Trophy again, and Danny Dennis Sutton won the Bednarik and the Lombardi. For their first seasons, I'm a bit surprised that Bobby Hilton and Kevin Hunter Jr. were both all Americans, but this team is great and I'm hoping that we can win it all. It's absolutely nuts that three teams from the SEC West made it in and two of them have to face off in their opening matchup. It wasn't close though as Texas A&M proved why they're the higher ranked seed and I love how we got some new teams into the playoff mix. Like the last one, it was a 2-3 possession game the entire time and surprisingly Jackson Dart was Ole Miss's leading rusher. This last quarterfinal decides who will play if we win. And Arizona's done their best to try and take down Kansas but they are trailing by 9 points with 20 seconds 
seconds left. And even though they got a touchdown, they need this onside kick recovery and they're not able to grab it. So now we know that we'll be playing Kansas if we win. I'm a bit surprised to see Washington State here, but Cameron Ward is a good quarterback. I'm sure he's had plenty of time to develop. And that's why I think it's crucial that we start the game the right way by scoring on our first drive, which shouldn't be too difficult. See, Washington State has had a good offense all year, but their defense has been their weakest point. And if I see anything that we can take advantage of, I'm going to show no signs of slowing down. I think our best move once we get inside the five is just hand it off to Nick Singleton. And it's worked for us so far as we have 100% red zone efficiency. He's looking to get his third touchdown of the day on this play, which he does. And I didn't want to give up points before halftime, but I think that's what we're about to do. There's eight seconds left, but I'm sure they're very close to field goal range. And if they're able to make this, it'll be a one possession game, but it's off the marks. In fact, it's even given us a chance to go for the Hail Mary. So I'm going to roll out with Drew Aller, set my feet, throw it up, and he heaved it all the way to the end zone, which we are going to come down with. I cannot believe that we just pulled that off. But for some reason, they only had two guys deep and Dante Cephas is better. Up to that point, I was a little nervous, but now that we scored like that, I'm taking so many risks. And if we can punch it in here, I think Washington State is going to be done. There's just no way to come back down 25 with this little time remaining. Caden King's going to get an interception. That is the perfect ending to this quarterfinal. And we will be moving on to play Kansas. To be entirely honest, everything changed after that Hail Mary. And I'm hoping that against the Jayhawks, we can have something like that go our way. If we win, this one decides who we play in the championship. And I can't believe that Texas A&M's large bills are finally paying off. The boosters have been waiting years for this. And it's Max Johnson and Le'Veon Moss carrying the heavy load. Now our semifinal matchup is against the Jayhawks. But going into this game, I noticed one weird thing. Our starting quarterback, Drew Aller, pulled his hamstring in warmups. So we're going to have no choice but to start the freshman we recruited at QB. And this was not what I was expecting to happen. I recruited Griffin to four just in case we needed him and it ended up paying off in the end. But even though he's like an 87, he's still a freshman quarterback. So he's going to have things that he's not great at and that's going to make for a lot of mistakes. I think our best bet is to run the ball as much as we can or just target Nick Singleton with passes. He breaks one tackle there. And on our next third and long, I'm going to go with the halfback screen. Hopefully this can go for a big gain, but it won't. So there's a decent chance that this could turn into a defensive battle. I just can't believe that Drew Aller got hurt in warmups that has ruined our season and if we can still manage to win it all without him I will be very surprised he is the key piece to this team that has kept everything going Kevin Hunter Jr. is not quick enough and now he's on the ground not getting up either we have lost our best offensive player and our best defensive player in a matter of seconds so it feels like things really can't get much worse for us and that was an amazing throw we're gonna end the first quarter tied at three but it's not gonna last for long as Nick Singleton's gonna take this halfback toss and outrun everybody somehow on that same play though he got hurt so he's rolled out for the game and Kevin Hunter Jr. is also rolled out for the game so we are in a lot of trouble. It feels like our best bet is to just attempt to chew the clock on Kansas and if we could hold on to this seven point lead that's what we'll be doing. I really don't even want to risk throwing the ball because that's how you turn the ball over with stupid mistakes and we need this punt to bounce well so Kansas doesn't return it and get points before the half. It hits off their helmet. They do recover it. Please stop him from getting past the 40 and that is so frustrating because they just got a free three points. This could end up being the worst semifinal matchup ever. But we are going to do what it takes to win. And if that involves taking a bunch of checkdowns and moving it down the field very slowly, that's exactly what we're going to do here on fourth and one. I thought we'd be able to throw it up, but nobody got open. And I just went away from the exact strategy that I wanted to use. At least Kansas is going to be kicking another field goal, but eventually those are going to start turning in the touchdown. So we need to finish this one off and Allen is going to break free. He's going to take it to the crib. Now we have them on a third and 10 and I almost picked that halfback screen off. They're being very aggressive going for it here on fourth and seven and they are not going to convert. So that is a massive stop. And you best believe that this drive is going to consist of running the ball and chewing the clock as much as we can. Assuming we can hold on, I don't know how we're going to beat Texas A&M, but we'll have to come up with a game plan. And I feel like we've set ourselves up in a pretty good position to move on to the championship. With this field goal, we're going to be taking an 11 point lead. And yes, Kansas is moving the ball very well. They're going to take this little check down who is going to fight all the way down to the two. But even if they score, they're going to have to recover an onside kick. And I have faith in this team. On second down, I'm going to guard the halfback. We get the sack, which was absolutely massive. We got the pressure in in time, and now that one's going out of the back of the end zone. So it is fourth and goal. Will they be able to convert? I'm going to use our safety, and it's over. Our defense made sure they never scored a single touchdown, and now it's time for what we have been working for for two years. I wasn't sure if we'd be able to make it this far, but we have, and the only issue is Drew Aller is still out. All of our faith has to go in Griffin to four, and if we could get a third down stop, that would be massive to hold them on their first drive. We do, and to be completely honest, that should have been a pick six. Our offense is going to run through Nick 
Singleton, who hopefully won't get hurt, but they know that, so they are shooting the gaps well. They're locking up, and even on this halfback screen, he's not going to be able to go anywhere. We might have to take a different approach on offense, but at least on defense, we're doing fantastic, and I think I'm going to let Griffin DeFore throw it a few times just to see what the man can do. He's a pocket passer quarterback, so if you give him enough time, he should be able to make the right read. He is a wide open receiver, and you know that Lambert Smith was coming down with it. They tried to press him, and that was a terrible decision because points are very hard to come by on our defense. It is third and 20. Max Johnson has a lot of time, but not enough. They are really struggling on offense right now. I don't quite know what I'm doing with this play. I'm going to take this slant, and you know what? Let's throw a little lateral, get an extra five or 10 yards. That is not the type of offense that we should be running with a freshman quarterback out there, but at least we end the first quarter with a lead. And now that we're getting closer to field goal range, we can take things a bit slower. If they're going to give us looks that we can run on, I'm going to have to pound it with Nick Singleton. But once they do it a few times, they commit to stopping it. And now we're going to have Keandre Lambert Smith open, who's going to get into the end zone. I don't know what adjustments they made at halftime, but it's been hard to move the ball. We're in a position now where I feel like we might be stuck at 14 points the rest of the game. So we need to maintain our lead as best as possible. And I'd like to think that running could help with that, but Texas a has been stopping it. So the next best thing is halfback screens and Nick Singleton has nowhere to go. Our freshman kicker is not good enough to hit from here. So we just have to try to pin them back. And that punt is going out inside the five, I think, or not. Evidently, Texas A&M got a great spot and King just got burnt. Caden King never gets burnt. Stewart is going to take it to the crib. And we all knew that the collapse would probably come, but this is getting scary. We have almost no momentum at this point, and I'm running a read option with a 56 speed QB. So you know that we are in trouble. We have just been trying to preserve this lead the entire time, and we're actually just a few first downs away from being able to end it, but that's going to be hard. We're pretty much going to be left with no choice but to have our freshman quarterback clutch up. And on third and eight, I am putting Nick Singleton out in motion. I'm going to see if he gets open. I didn't like any of those reads, but look at that. We got Dante and it's just one first down away. One first down away from a championship for Penn State. They're so close. And this was the dream. This was the goal. We have persevered through so many challenges and that is officially it. It wasn't pretty, but Griffin DeFore got it done. And I have officially fixed Penn State in just two years. There's a chance that they could be doing this in real life next season or this season. And let me know which team I should rebuild next on these updated rosters, trying to win it all with them.